Hi, welcome back. This is Patty. Thank you for joining me again today. Um, as we discussed last time, we're going to be doing um, putting together the Real Good Toys Beachside Bungalow. And I'm going to be um, creating a Hawaiian theme to bring back some memories from my past. One thing we're doing is step by step, following the directions. We will be dry fitting or dry testing the um, the pieces to make sure they fit and if they don't then we will sand down fix the pieces so that they'll glue but first I want to talk about getting ready and I think that's a priority and one something that I keep reading and and makes a lot of sense is to think about your colors um, pre-plan that uh, make sure you have the, all the tools you need the glues solvents for the non-water-based products so I wanted to go over that. Um, there are many um, products out in the market that can help you choose your colors and it's always good to use a color wheel if you want to look at harmonies of colors and you can see this is just one particular example but there are many and different brands and then for stains you can see you have different choices there. For the paint I always get the sample paints and have them mix the colors I like um, I also like to research if I'm going to be doing something historical or cultural. For instance, this house, as I said, is going to have a Hawaiian theme. So I have researched the colors, the flowers, the culture, and different techniques in the Hawaiian architecture and design. And we'll go over that as we go along. But I have also realized I am partial to blue. So you'll see I turn, tend to use blue, which is appropriate for a Hawaiian beachside bungalow or any other beachside bungalow. And again, they're dollhouses, so you can make it any way you want. So I'm going to have blues, shades of blues. I try to coordinate the outside and the inside, and um, I try to look at, in my mind, what am I going to be putting on those walls, and how will it complement whatever I'm designing, whether it's going to be a tapestry, a picture, a painting, you know, something like that. So keep that in mind as well. So I have different colors. I have my blues, I have white, uh, yellow possibly for accents, and a brown. And then for my roof, I'm going to be using, as the builder suggests, a polyacrylic. You can either use a polyurethane, polyacrylic varnish that's clear, or you can choose a color. And I'm going with a, a lighter wood for mine, and it's all in one stain and color. Now, when you get ready to clean up, you have to use mineral spirits to clean. When you're using these solvent based products, please make sure you use a mask, gloves, and in a well ventilated area. Um, I do have this weathered gray. I am going to be doing some other projects with the house, so that'll come along later on. Now, when you think about getting ready and you talk about your different glues, I've learned a lot. First of all, they suggest a tacky glue. Um, some people have used um, um, white glue. Carpenter's glue tends to dry brown and it's very difficult to get up. I have had dollhouses that we have refurbished that someone used an awful lot of carpenter's glue and had globs and globs of glue and had to use X-Acto knives and and scrub and clean and it was a mess. If you use something like this, which is the Aileen's Tacky Glue, and I'm, I'm not doing a product endorsement. This has worked well for me. You choose what you like, but I love this. One, it's easy because it stays upside down and it makes it easier to use, but also it dries clear. Aileen's also has a white glue that's good. Now the, for the shingles, they are suggesting a non-water-based glue and the reason being the shingles are very thin and if you get too much liquid on it then they will curl and you will you'll have a very rustic roof which may not be what you want so I'm going to be sampling some things I know other people have used something like quick grip they suggest not using um, your Loctite your um, um, glues that can dry instantly. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to be checking out how my shingles apply with the wood glue with this other Gorilla um, product and also E6000. 
And again, these, this is very strong. You need to be in a ventilated area. I would suggest wearing a mask. I have honestly used wood glue and I've used aliens on shingles and it's worked, but they were small areas. So I think it just depends on how much you use. When I get through, some of the areas may need to be sanded and then reapplied, especially when you're using polyurethane. So there are different grades of sandpaper you can use and they suggest using a, a block, which you can take a block of wood, you wrap your sandpaper around the wood and it will give you the, the ability to hold it, especially when you're in the little piece of areas. I've also found that nail um, emery boards work really well in small areas with doll houses, so keep that in mind. We're thinking small, miniature, so we have to kind of refocus on how we do things. When you are through sanding, uh, take a dry, clean cloth, wipe off the area, make sure it's fine. With a polyurethane, sometimes you can take um, steel wool and dust it and see if you can bring a sheen to it just depends on what type of patina you want. And we will see you next time. Have a great day.